Hello, my friends, and welcome to Studio Day Heffrey. I'm me. I'm Jeff. I appreciate everybody who stops by and checks out the things that I do here when I'm talking cowboys. Sorry if it hasn't been as active as I am sometimes, because I got a job and all that, so I don't want to go live until after we're not live, which is why you'll get some recorded stuff instead. But I did get a bunch of cowboy questions from you guys, so here in the next, I don't know, five to ten minutes... We will talk about Tyler Smith, Tyron Smith, Odell Beckham. Uh, Some of you are crazy and already worried about off-season needs and what you want to pick in the first round. All sorts of good Cowboys content for you. And I have to thank my friends at BetOnline for this, your number one source for all your sports betting needs this season. And my partner here, BetOnline. I'm real sorry if you got backdoored by the prevent defense. That's a bunch bunch of bullsh. Cowboys should have played real defense. But it's the fastest and easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and events, whether that's the NFL, whether you're an NBA guy, NHL, MMA, tennis, boxing, golf, betonline.ag. Receive a 50% welcome bonus with your first deposit. Use the promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your rewards. Bet online where the game starts. Now, I hope we don't like hear where Odell Beckham is signing in the next five minutes while I'm sitting here talking to you guys or talking into a camera that I'll then upload and we'll be talking to you guys. I don't think that's likely, though. According to Von Miller, it's down to Buffalo and Dallas, which is weird because he's visiting New York today. Does that mean that Odell walked out of there and then texted Von Miller and was like, this place sucks, dude. Daniel Jones is awful. That's probably what I would text. Um, But yes, let's get to questions from the peoples. And this is one that I've been battling for a while here. Uh, This is from on Twitter, RSL fan for life. Why does the offense succeed despite Kellen Moore's predictability? If random fans can predict the plays, surely defensive coordinators can as well. And how do you think Odell would actually be used in this offense? I can't, I just can't get with people who do the kill Kellen Moore thing because if your offense is always in the top five or top three or since Dak got back from injury, top one in the NFL, I just can't say that your offensive coordinator sucks. Can't do it. And I think depending on the drive, you'll have different drives that feature three tight ends, different drives that feature two running backs, and then all of a sudden you're an 11 personnel, and here's a CD drive, and here's a Pollard drive, and here's a Zeke drive, and here's a Ferguson and Schultz drive. I think if you have the number one to number three offense in football, which they do in the last three, four years when Dak plays, and your quarterback is, like, if you absolutely love Dak, then maybe you think he's one of the five or six best quarterbacks in football. And if you hate Dak, you think he's the 12th or 13th best quarterback in football, your offensive line is fairly average. Your receiver your receiver room is fairly average. Uh, your tight end room is actually pretty solid. And yet, you're one of the best offenses in football. The kill and Kellen Moore thing, I just, I can't do it. Now, if they throw an incompletion on first down and run on second and 10, I hate him in that moment. But that's about it. I mean, outside of that, it's just nitpicking plays that don't work. And that's just what we do in sports. Whatever works was great. Whatever doesn't work is bad, which makes it really weird to question Kellen Moore when the league average this year is less than 22 points and the game's Dak's been back for. It's like 40, 28, 27, 24. Like, they're – I don't know, man. I can't do it. I can't do it. I think it's just that they haven't gotten to an NFC title game or a Super Bowl, and so people just get frustrated. Does Dallas upgrade? This is from at Water Follis. Does Dallas upgrade from Anthony Brown next offseason, or do they like their guys? I don't know if the word is upgrade, but I'd imagine you'll have a new starting corner uh, a year from now. And to you sickos who, when I'm going live or leaving the comments that you want to hear about draft stuff, can I don't do the draft stuff until the Cowboys are done playing football. And well, if they play really, really deep, I'll probably start in January anyway. But uh, looking at the Cowboys roster right now, if you just had to guess and you said, hey, it's a perfect world, what position do you want to be the best player available when they pick in the first round? My answer is probably corner, but like everything else in sports, it depends. Is Tyron Smith still here? He's a $17 million cap hit next year, which is very reasonable for the player he is if he's available to play, but none of that is guaranteed. If you were moving on from Tyron Smith to save that money, then you could say a tackle or a guard and then play Tyler Smith at the other one. Anthony Brown will be a free agent. You could save $5 million if you released Jordan Lewis. So my early favorite would probably be corner. Uh, Damone Clark and Jabril Cox hopefully are good to play linebacker next year. 
receiver room. You guys know how I feel about wide receivers, right? But, man, you would hope that Jalen Tolbert can help the receiver room next year. You would hope. Uh, But wide receiver ain't dead to me. So, depending on Tyron, could be an offensive lineman. Won't be a tight end. They've got those guys lined up. Um, Could always be a defensive lineman. But my early favorite would be corner, where you let Anthony Brown go. You've got Deron Bland. Maybe you're letting Jordan Lewis go. I don't know. Depends how much monies we need. Uh, but you go Trayvon Diggs and then Jordan Lewis and or Deron Bland. Unfortunately, Kelvin Joseph is a second-round pick. Nishan Wright is a fourth-round pick. Haven't shown you anything that shows you that they are going to be a dude that steps in and starts, but that's not impossible. Uh, so my early favorite would probably be corner. I mean, maybe if you're, if you're picking at 32, if you win the Super Bowl, and then you end up picking like a nose tackle or a safety, I could deal with that. But I'd say it depends on Tyron Smith, corner, or guard or tackle. And then Tyler Smith can fill in whichever one you don't pick. How about that? You like that? Uh, let's see. Camo GGs. Oh, yeah. Taking a little early look at the offseason. What positions would you be targeting? Whoops. Is Tyler Smith hitting a rookie wall? Seems his performance has regressed the last couple of games. Tyron Smith coming back at the right time. No, I think Tyler Smith, what happens with what, 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 what happens with Tyler Smith is you see the highlight plays. Like you see what a human mover he is in the run game and just how he can physically dominate people. And even also in pass protection, when he locks somebody up, it's like, holy crap, what an animal. But snap in and snap out, he's not a consistently good offensive tackle. And as a rookie first-round pick, and just being kind of thrown in the fire there after working at guard and camp, like that's okay. He's not getting you hurt. Some of the penalties do. But he's, like, you know, he's having a, I would say he's having a better rookie year than I would have thought, but a worse rookie year than those who are pretending that he's doing great. He's been okay at tackle. And them little snaps he got at guard, is better. When Tyron gets back, it's going to be fun. Tyler's going to get him off that island where, he's, where he ends up holding a decent amount of the time and you sometimes a false start because you're worried about speed on the edge or whatever and you just let him get inside there and beat people up. Oh, it's going to be fun. Steel 6991. Three questions, Jeff. Will Tyron hop back in and not look rusty? Meaning, will it truly be an upgrade? Uh, it'll be an upgrade. Maybe it won't be an upgrade in the first half of the first game. But, yeah, Tyron will be an upgrade. He is such a – he is not built like a normal person. He's not built like an offensive lineman. He just looks like a rocked-up tight end or wide receiver. Um, I know his body has things that get hurt on it a lot. But, no, I mean, if assuming that he is physically recovered from the hamstring being torn off the bone, uh, Tyron Smith will step in and be a good left tackle. More snaps need to go to Vander Esch or Clark. Run defense looking better with Clark. Damone Clark is another one that I think if you're saying that he is being, he's been incredible, I think you're overshooting it. But I think the fact that he's coming off of spinal fusion and was immediately thrown into the mix and that he's out there and he's swimming and not sinking is promising. Uh, I think Vander Esch is playing better football at the moment and Anthony Barr should be back this week from the hamstring. But I would still mix Damone Clark in. Freaking dude can fly. Peters or McGovern, who's better right now? Well, this is one of those hard ones where we have some snaps to try to judge it on. But the team who watches them practice all week, every week, has decided that McGovern is the better guard. And so I'm not going to fight them on it because I don't watch them practice every day. Peters looked capable in his left tackle snaps, which makes sense because he's been doing that his whole damn life. Um, But I think soon that won't matter because soon those will both be your backups. McGovern will be backing up Tyler Smith at left guard. Jason Peters will be backing up Tyron at left tackle. And you'll be in good shape. Pull a T. What number is Odell going to wear? I don't know. Let me check the Cowboys roster. I don't think we have a lot open. I think he would look good in number eight, but Cowboy fans get mad at me for trying to give out number eight. Uh, let's see. Single digits. Two is not. It's taken. It's just hurt. So the only single digit available would be eight. Twelve, but then people get mad about Starbotch. It's a 
16, 17. Neither of those a hurt number. Yeah, Dennis Houston has 17 technically. Well, but that's practice squad, so it doesn't matter. You can still do it. Um, I don't know. Maybe he'll buy a number from somebody. You guys tell me what number you want Odell Beckham to wear. Uh, George's Mohawk. I hate to agree with Jera, but this team seems different than good teams in the past. How do they shed the ghost of the last 27 years and make it to the Super Bowl? Nobody likes this answer, and I hate having to say it. It's... Luck is... Luck is too nice, because how you play determines if you win a football game. But the fact that it's been 27 years since an NFC title game primarily the answer is, instead of luck, let's use the word variance. If you're getting yourself into the postseason with a decent seed and you play competitive playoff games, but you've been on the losing end of one-score games a lot, um, that is the variance of football. It's the difference between Aaron Rodgers making that throw to, um, to Jared Cook. Uh, it's the difference of, does the ref call it a catch? Well, depending what Rodgers does on his next drive. Uh, it's the difference of a score in the 49er game, playing decent offense in the first half. And people hate it just because people are fans, and it's been 27 years. You, you view it as an excuse, I guess. But to me, there is a reason that teams, nobody consistently wins one-score games in football. From year to year, from month to month. It's always something that just kind of boop, 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 boop. And the Cowboys have been on the losing end of that when it came when it comes to postseason play. And it sucks. And if you're a fan, it sucks. Um, but also, I do think this team seems a little bit different than good teams in the past because right now you have a starting quarterback that, unlike last year, when, once again, the numbers for the whole season say that the Cowboys played really good offense, but the last eight to ten weeks, five of them the quarterback didn't play well. And once he came back from the calf, outside of the two, like, really big games against the bad teams that they had, which, what was that? One of them was the Eagles and whatever. Uh, you didn't have an offense that was consistently playing good football. Dak looks really good right now. Mike is in year two and even better. Tank looks the best he's ever looked. So I think this year, more than last year, I feel confident just in where they are right this second. And if, they, if you were going to play a playoff game tomorrow – that they'd be in good shape. When they were going to play the 49ers, I would imagine I picked them to win, but you you couldn't have been confident that they were going to go play a good offensive football game. You can now. So I feel good about this team. Right now there's three teams in the NFC, I think. Maybe you throw in Minnesota, but I think it's Philadelphia, it's Dallas, um, it's San Francisco, and maybe you throw in Minnesota. What you going to do when you get there? What you going to do? Why is Dak Prescott held to a different standard than every other QB? I don't know. Has anyone asked Brown, Turpin, or Tolbert how it feels to have your QB and the entire organization openly recruit someone to come make sure your role is lessened? Well, play better. Uh, and, and like Noah Brown, I don't, I, you can't complain about Noah Brown. He's been a career special teamer that's been, you know, he's filled in admirably. Uh, Kevontae Turpin, I'd love to know the reason that they don't think he can play more offensive snaps. And Tolbert, figure it out, man. And yeah, I'm good. Appreciate my guys at Bet Online for presenting this thing. And I appreciate you guys for stopping by. You the best. I'll see you tomorrow when Jesse, Holly, and I will get together. We'll talk about the Cowboys versus the Colts. Man, that better be a molly whopping. Uh, in the Believe in Cowboys show. Make sure you're listening to 97.1 The Freak in DFW, where myself, Kevin Turner, and Julie Dobbs are on from 7 to 11 a.m. Monday through Friday. If you're looking for your Cowboys talk, 8 o'clock, a lot of times. Decent amount of time at 7.45. Sometimes at 7 o'clock. Decent amount of times at 9 o'clock. Vach Lombardi every Friday at 9 o'clock. Ooh, that's tomorrow. <laughs> That'll be fun. All right. Remember, you have no idea what anybody's going through, so be cool to everyone. I love you. Be easy.